Humans have been wearing flashy jewelry for hundreds of thousands of years. Why? By Michelle Langley. Sparkly jewelry, expensive shoes, designer watches, who doesn't love a bit of bling? This obsession with decorating your bodies isn't just a trivial activity. Archaeological, archaeological evidence shows us it's actually a large part of what makes us human. Why jewelry is important. Why do we spend so much on decorating ourselves? In short, it's because we use bling to communicate. For example, consider engagement rings. It's well understood in many countries that a sparkle on the ring finger of the left hand means that the wearer is engaged to be married. That ring sends a particular message. Indeed, everything we wear is sending messages. We are all familiar with the phrase such as power suits and statement pieces. The items we choose to wear tell those around us who we are, professionals, athletes, doctors, artists, mothers, and so on. Some choices are conscious, others not so much, but nevertheless, everything we wear is telling a story. Blingy birds and fancy fishes. When I talk publicly about the use of bling by people, audience members often bring up the cases of the Satan bower birds. The male of this species builds an intricate bower before decorating it with blue objects. Similarly, but not underwater, male puffer fish create gorgeous geometric patterns in the ocean floor. But how is this seemingly artistic behavior any different to what we humans do? The short answer is abstract thought. The bowerbird and the pufferfish are focused on attracting a mate. Their message is simple. I'm here. I'm healthy. There is no conversation about how they should send this message. They just do it. Our messages, those we humans are sending through our bling, are coded using agreed symbols like a diamond ring, which we decide stands for something else, engaged to be married. This process of agreeing amongst ourselves that a certain thing can stand for something completely different is what makes us human. And jewelry has been central to this unique ability for hundreds of thousands of years. Decorating our bodies, expanding our minds. For archaeologists, finding body adornments is the closest thing to finding prehistoric thought. Their first appearance in the archaeological record tells us when the human mind had become sophisticated enough to con sieve of individual identities. Originally, human, humanity lived in small groups that were spread out across the landscape. Everyone knew everyone, and interactions between complete strangers were a rare occurrence. Growing populations, however, led to an increasingly complex social world in which we didn't know every individual personally. This meant we needed to start telling people who we were. So we began wearing certain things to send messages regarding our personal status, available, married, leader, healer, and group affiliations. This use of body decorations enabled humans to continue expanding our communities, which led to more complex behaviors and more complex minds. The earliest evidence for bling is red pigments, mineral earth ochres, which were used as body paints by modern humans, homo sapiens like ourselves, some 285,000 years ago in Africa. Interestingly, it appears that not long after around 250,000 years ago, Netherlands were doing the same thing in Europe. However, body paint only lasts for so long until you wash, it rains, or it simply wears off. It has a time limit. Beads, beads, and more beads. Beads, on the other hand, can last for generations. This ability to be used and reused significantly outweighs the time and energy it takes to make them. And by that, and by at least 100,000 years ago, people both needed and recognized the advantages of beads. Around this time, people in Africa and in Israel were seeking out tiny white shells called Nasserus punching a hole through their surface so it could be strung and using them alongside red body paint. It is not an ancient, an accident that the oldest beads are made from seashells. They come in shapes like round, colors we like, white, cream, black, and are shiny. We like this a lot. Small shells are also hardly <clears throat> hardy, being able to withstand being jolted or dropped 
useful. What's more, they can be worn in a wide variety of ways, allowing us <clears throat> to transmit many different messages. Soon we found other light colored and shiny materials, bone, tooth, ivory, antler, stone, to make new types of ornaments and send even more messages. Getting inked. What's more permanent than beads? Interesting. Inserting ink into the dermis layer of the skin, also known as tattooing. Sculpture for, sculptures from Europe suggest that tattooing may have an antiquity of at least 30,000 years, though the earliest indisputable evidence for tattooing is currently the Tyrolean Iceman, commonly known as Otzi. The victim of murder some 5,300 years ago, Atsi sports some 61 skin markings. Similarly aged are two pendynastic Egyptian mummies, while a younger spectacular example is a 2,500 year old Siberian princess. Tattooing also has an impressive history throughout the Pacific, inspiring modern practices while simultaneously passing on ancient stories. Bling is human. Because bling is so closely tied to communication, archaeologists are able to track not only the development of our minds, but also the development of our societies. For us, more bling in the archaeological record indicates more interactions. Traded bling tells us who was talking to whom, and new types of bling reflect change change circumstances. All bling is valuable because it tells us something about the person who wore it. Now that you've listened to the story, you need to go to your um, analysis sheet and fill that out. What is the main idea of the article? What is the summary of the article? Give some supporting details from the article. If you need to go back through and listen to it again, um, do that as well. You need to give three. And then how you might use this information in real life. How did it help you? How, what is something that you remember from it? All right, we'll be working on the next story tomorrow. See you tomorrow.